Hola y bienvenidos a otra clase de inglés. Um, hoy la tema es the, uh, the Future. Vamos a ver la estructura Going To. Déjame arreglar el sonido. Ok, and vamos a ver going to y también vamos a ver el presente continua para hablar del futuro. Um, antes que empezamos, las personas que son miembros de mi canal nivel... Solo, ahora solo tengo dos niveles. Nivel um, plata. Pueden unirse a la conferencia de Zoom. Voy a poner el enlace aquí en el, en el, uh, en el chat donde pueden ir a ellos para encontrar el otro enlace para unirse uh, a Zoom. Uh, antes que empezamos, vamos a ver quién tenemos en el chat. Tenemos Selena, Rodolfo, um, Martón, uh, Santiago. Martin, what's the t what's the difference between baggage and luggage? I think they're synonymous. Creo que son synonymo. No creo que realmente hay diferencia entre baggage y luggage. Creo que más común ahora es usar luggage, no um, baggage. Um, vamos a ver qué entendemos en la conferencia. Ahora Zoom. Me parece que Zoom ha cambiado su sistema. Claudia, no, nobody. Ok, vamos a empezar la clase. Vamos a empezar la clase. Déjame compartir la pantalla. Ok, aquí tenemos la pantalla. Y vamos a empezar. En esta clase, como dije, vamos a ver... ¿Cómo hablar del futuro? Hay varias maneras de hablar del futuro. Um, el más común realmente es la estructura going to. Uh, también podemos usar el presente continua. Um, y también tenemos otros tiempos como el futuro simple. Pero eso no, es, no vamos a ver eso hoy. Solo vamos a ver hoy going to y el presente continua porque esos son los más usados. So, para empezar, tengo este texto que trata de un um, summer camp, a summer camp. Este texto aquí arriba trata de un summer camp. Primero, ¿qué es un summer camp? Bueno, antes que leímos el texto arriba, voy a leer el texto abajo para ver qué es un summer camp. Y aquí también tengo la traducción en español. In the United States, a summer camp is a place in the country where parents can pay to send their children during the school summer holidays. The children staying there can take part in many outdoor and social activities. So, esos son muy comunes en Estados Unidos. Aquí tengo arriba un texto. Um, y aquí tengo one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tengo siete verbos, pero return y play vamos a usar dos veces. Y esos verbos, lo que tenemos que poner en los espacios. Um, si tengo alguien en el chat, tengo Claudia, a ver si está. No. Se desapareció. Bueno, las personas en el chat. Alan Morales, where can I see the class? Hi, Alan. Alan, you say al canal. Pero ahí está el otro enlace y ahí entras en la conferencia de Zoom. Ok, vamos a seguir. No tengo nadie o sí tengo alguien. Hi, Claudia. Hi, teacher. How, How are, are you? you? I'm fine, fine thanks. thanks. Good. Ok, so en este texto, Claudia, 
lo que tenemos que hacer es meter los verbos aquí arriba en el espacio correcto. Yo lo voy a la IA y tú me dices cuál verbo va en cada espacio. Yes. Hi kids and welcome to the summer camp. We have a lot of activities planned for you this week. On Monday, you're going to... What's the missing verb here, Claudia? On Monday, you're going to... In the mountains. Something in the mountains. What can you do in the mountains? If anybody in the watch, yeah, watch, watch no, the mountains. No, you can watch the mountains. Yeah, we wouldn't really watch the mountains because that's like observando. Uh, you could look at the mountains, but you can't watch in. Um, Myra, Carrillo, oh, you're going oh, walk. Yeah, but we don't have walk in the list. Not today. No. Is today verbals? Yeah, the answer is, as Myra in the chat says, is hike, hike. So hike is un tipo de, es un tipo de caminar. Ah, oh yeah. ¿Cómo se llama en español? Um, es como el senderismo, senderismo, senderismo. Sí, puede ser, puede ser, no conocía yes. el término. Yes. Hike. Hike, you're going to hike in the mountains. Um, and then you're going to, to the camp. What's the missing words here? Escalar, this is, Alan, this is, no, no, it's exactly escalar, porque escalar is climb, climb the mountains. Hike is como caminando, pero en las montañas. No escalando así. So, Alan, si quieres visitar el enlace, puedes unirse a la conferencia. El enlace de la tab de la comunidad. Um, where were we? Yeah. What's the answer to this one, Claudia? Have you got the answer? And then you're going to something to the camp. Camp es, cam es camping, campamento. Camp es el campamento. Sí, es el mm -hmm. summer camp. Estamos hablando de un summer camp. Este, este es como una introducción a los niños que han llegado al summer camp. A, un, a summer camp es un camp, campamento que tienen en Estados Unidos, donde son muy comunes en Estados Unidos. Los padres mandan sus hijos a esos campamentos en el verano um, y hacen muchas actividades, mientras que en las vacaciones del verano. Yeah, Jesus says trekking. Well, trekking is in English too. Es palabra en inglés. Es sí, es más o menos sinónimo con, con hiking. Trekking, hiking. So what's the missing word? Who's got the missing word here? You're going to... Voy a quitar los que hemos usado. Hemos usado el hike, so voy a quitarlo para hacerlo más fácil. Who's got the answer? You're going to return to the camp, says Myra. Very good. Yeah, you're going to return to the camp. Good. Are you still there, Claudia? Yeah. Yes. And, and you're going to some films. Watch. Some film. Watch. Watch. Yeah, some el verbo film. que usamos generalmente con películas. Para mirar películas. Yeah, watch. Um, debería comentar también que... Films is inglés británico. Debería realmente decir movies porque supuestamente este texto está en Estados Unidos. Films is el inglés británico. You're going to watch some movies. On Tuesday, you're going to a bicycle tour. Have. Have now. Mm, take. Take, yeah, very good. You're going to take a bicycle tour. Take, take a bicycle tour. And here we can remove watch because we've used it. And we can remove take because we've used it. 
And we've also removed, we've also used, we've got one return left, yeah. You're going to take a bicycle tour. And then in the afternoon, you're going to play by the swimming pool. Well, puede ser play, pero no es. Es posible play, pero tenemos que usar play en otros lugares. Relax. Relax. Very good. Relax by the swimming pool. Oh, hold on, because now this seems to lock. Yeah, that's it. You're going to relax by the swimming pool. Let's make that yellow. Um, on Wednesday, you're going to something play. tennis. I play see tennis. play tennis in yeah. the morning. Very good, yeah. Play tennis. Play tennis. So we can make that yellow. We can remove relax because we've used it. We can remove play. Oh, no, we can't remove play because there's two plays, sorry. Yeah. And in the afternoon, you are going to play football. Very good, yeah. I'm going to play football. Play football, good. Um, carry on, you can carry on reading if you like, Claudia. Claudia? Yes, teacher. You can carry on here, you can carry on reading if you want. You want to carry Thursday, on reading? Thursday is water sport day. Yeah, and in good. the morning you are going sailing and in the afternoon, you are going surfing. Good. Finally, on Friday, you are going to have a special... Very good, yeah. Coffee. Going to have a special, special breakfast. breakfast. And then you're going to return to your homes. Very good, yeah. So all of these uh, verbs, let's go to the next page because on the next page I have the text with the answers. So all the ones in red um, are examples of the structure going to that we use for that, pre, for, that we can use to talk about future plans, future plans. I also have two examples in green, which uh, is the present continuous that we can also use to talk about the future. To talk is very similar, two very similar structures. They, in este caso, parecen casi iguales, pero no son iguales. Vamos a ver la diferencia en un momento. La estructura es diferente. So, aquí abajo también tengo el texto otra vez en español. Voy a leer el inglés de nuevo y pueden ver abajo las palabras en español que no entienden. So, hi kids and welcome to the summer camp. We have a lot of activities planned for you this week. On Monday, you're going to hike in the mountains, and then you're going to return to the camp and you're going to watch some films. Puede cambiarse a movies, porque supuestamente es inglés americano. On Tuesday, you're going to take a bicycle tour and in the afternoon, you're going to relax by the swimming pool. On Wednesday, you're going to play tennis in the morning. And in the afternoon, you're going to play football. Thursday is water sports day. And in the morning, you're going sailing. And in the afternoon, you're going surfing. Finally, on Friday, you're going to have a special breakfast. And then you're going to return to your homes. So Milton says, is this American English or British English? It's English English. There's some English. Uh, my accent is British because I'm from England. So let's carry on. Um, 
with the next page. Aquí, here abajo tengo el texto en español, si pueden ver ahorita, palabras, vocabulario nuevo. Let's carry on. Uh, all these ones in red are examples of using the structure going to, to talk about future plans. You're going to hike in the mountains. You're going to return to the camp. Whoops, shouldn't have moved that. You're going to return to the camp. You're going to watch some movies. That's spelt movies wrong now. You're going to take a bicycle tour. You're going to take a bicycle tour. You're going to relax by the swimming pool. You're going to play tennis. You're going to have a special breakfast. You're going to return to your homes. Uh, ese es como se dice en español, por ejemplo, you're going to hike. Vas a cambiar por las montañas. You're going to watch. Um, where's that in Spanish? Well, aquí tengo el futuro simple en español, que es otro tiempo. Tal vez mejor decir, vas a ver algunas películas. Uh, vas a jugar tenis. En inglés es, you're going to play tennis. You're going to play tennis. I've lost that one there. There it is there. Okay, let's carry on with the next page. So here I have the, the um, same sentences that we saw and also have the translation in Espanol. So you're going to hike in the mountains, como pasa caminar en las montañas. You're going to return to the camp. Pasa volver al campamento. I think that should be campamento, no, shouldn't it, Claudia? Campamento, it's, it's good. It's, it's, good. it's correcto, oh, okay. Yes, it's correct. Um, you're going to watch some films. Vas a ver algunas películas. You're going to take a bicycle tour. Vas a tomar un tour en bicicleta. You're going to relax by the swimming pool. Vas a relajarte. Uh, creo que es junto al lado de, creo. De la piscina, el lado de. You're going to play tennis. Uh, vas a jugar tennis. You're going to play football. Vas a jugar football. You're going to have a special breakfast. Vas a tener un desayuno especial. You're going to return to your homes. También vimos dos otras cosas. Uh, también podemos usar presente continua para hablar del futuro. You're going sailing, vas a navegar. You're going surfing, vas a surfear. Um, eso es ahora, voy a explicar la diferencia entre esos dos en un momento. Alan Morales dice, ¿cómo puedo conectarme via Zoom? Alan, primero hay que ir a la tab de la comunidad aquí en en YouTube y eso voy a poner en el chat ahora y ahí vas a encontrar el enlace para conectarte a Zoom. Ok, vamos a seguir. Um, so, going to, going to. So, vamos a ver cómo se forma de la estructura going to. So, um, para formar la estructura going to, tenemos que tener primero, como siempre en inglés, el sujeto. Y eso está seguido por el verbo be en el presente simple. Y tenemos que usar la forma del verbo be que corresponde a el sujeto. So, I am, you are, he is, we are you are or they are. Pero como siempre en inglés, vamos a usar las contracciones y en cambio de decir I am, decimos I'm, your, we are, there, he's, she's, or it's. 
So, vamos a empezar generalmente con uno de esos, el, el sujeto con el verbo be, y después tenemos que decir las dos palabras going to. Y eso está seguido por el verbo principal en su forma base. So, aquí tengo, puedo hacer ejemplos usando las contracciones. I'm going to talk. You're going to run. He's going to swim. So, this is como se dice en español, por ejemplo, I'm going to talk is voy a hablar. I'm going to, you are going to run, vas a correr. Um, he's going to swim, va a nadar. Usamos este para hablar de planes en el futuro. So hold on, uh, let's, uh, I think Alan has joined the conference. Hi, Alan. Can you hear me? Alan, can you hear me? You need to connect your sound, Alan. You need to connect your sound. So, um, aquí tengo notas. Going to, para planes en el futuro. Se usa going to para hablar de planes o intenciones en el futuro. Y se traduce por ir o hacer algo. Hi, Alan. Hi, Richard. Hear me? Hi, how are you? Fine. Where are you from, Alan? Where are you from? From, from Peru. From Peru. Nice to meet you. Which part of Peru are you from? Are you from Lima, Arequipa? From Trujillo. Trujillo, and in, in the north of Peru. Yes. Eight or nine hours by uh, bus. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, um, Vamos a seguir con la clase. En un momento tengo preguntas para ustedes en el chat. Um, so, going to se usa para planes en el futuro. Con planes queremos decir cosas que decidiste hacer antes que hablaste. Um, so, aquí tengo, se usa going to para hablar de planes o intenciones en el futuro. Se traduce por Ir a hacer algo. Por ejemplo, I'm going to run a marathon. En español es voy a correr un maratón el próximo mes. Cuando los nativos hablan. Déjame quitar este. Cuando los nativos hablan, casi siempre se usan la contracción del verbo be. Y también se reducen la pronunciación del to, la palabra to. Y sueno como tú. Por ejemplo, I'm, I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to run a marathon. So, aquí digo I am, pero esta usamos la contracción I'm. Pero nadie dice I am going to. Lo que decimos es I'm going to, going to. The pronunciation is, I'm going to run a marathon. Uh, aquí tengo escrito más fonéticamente, pero no se puede escribir así realmente, pero así se habla. Go, I'm going to run a marathon. Um, otra cosa es que a veces los nativos dicen gonna. Vas a escuchar este mucho. Gonna, especialmente en canciones y en inglés, informal, no dicen going to y ni dicen going to, dicen gonna. I'm gonna run a marathon. Este es el inglés informal, pero sí lo vas a escuchar mucho. So, completo es I am going to run a marathon, pero más común decir es I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to run a marathon, como, como este. Y a veces la gente dice, I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to run a marathon. Um, antes que seguimos, debería comentar del uh, negativo. Para formar negativo, tenemos que simplemente agregar la palabra not 
después el verbo be. Pero vamos a usar las mismas contracciones que vimos antes con el verbo be. Entonces vamos a decir, I'm not going to talk, o usando el, este aquí, I'm not going to talk. You're not going to run. He's not going to swim. Or you can use, pueden usar esta opción aquí también. Uh, esos, esos mismos antes con el verbo be. Podemos hacer la contracción con el sujeto del verbo be o con el verbo be y la palabra not. You aren't going to run a marathon. You aren't going to run a marathon or you aren't going to run a marathon. <coughs> ok, creo que deberíamos practicar la pronunciación con los que están en el, en el en Zoom. Y lo que queremos usar es um, la pronunciación bueno, de este favor, forma. Estoy en clase, John. Vamos a usar la... Vamos a usar la pronunciación que tengo aquí, que es I'm, go I'm going to. I'm going to. So let's... Uh, let's try some of these. Um, I'm going to talk. Okay, Claudia, repeat. I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk. Good. Alan, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk. Good. So, los que están viendo en YouTube también puede, um, pueden uh, practicar también. Julie says, I'm going to hit the sack. I'm going to hit the sack. I'm going to hit the sack, um, que en español es pegar el costar, cos, cosit, ¿cómo se llama en español? Costado, creo, costado. What's sack in Spanish? Bueno, la, la, la traducción, um, I think it's costado. Pero cuando decimos hit the sack in English, significa que I'm going to sleep. Sack Spanish. I need to check. I think it's costado or something like that. No, sack, saco. Is there any other number? No. Um, well, this is saco. Then say it to the other number. Saco. See, I'm going to hit the sack means I'm going to sleep or I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. Okay, let's carry on with the practicing the pronunciation. Um, you're going to run, Claudia. You're going to run. You're going to run. Yeah. Um, Alan, we're going to eat. We're going to eat. Good. Let's try some negatives. Um, you aren't going to listen. Claudia, you aren't going to listen. You aren't going to listen. Good, very good, yeah. They aren't going to read, Alan. They aren't going to read. Good, very good. Uh, let's, uh, I think we can continue with the next page, uh, which is the, how do we form the questions, questions? Questions we're going to. So to form the question, like, como siempre en inglés, tenemos que poner el verbo be primero e seguido por el sujeto. So in Cambodia, this here, I am going to talk. Decimos, am I going to talk? Igual con la pronunciación here, is going to, going to, going to, going to. Or a veces gonna. Are you going to run? Is he going to swim? Are we going to eat? Um, are you going to listen? Are they going to read? Esos, todas esas preguntas son preguntas en cual la respuesta es um, yes or no. Y tenemos que usar los mismos respuestas cortos que usamos con el verbo be. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Uh, yes, you are. No, you aren't. Yes, he is. No, he isn't. Yes, we are. No, we aren't. 
Yes, you are. No, you aren't. The same. Yes, they are. No, they aren't. What have we got here? Going to preguntas. Um, Se forma las preguntas con el verbo be en el presente, más el sujeto, más going to, más el verbo. Por ejemplo, are you going to run a marathon? Vas a correr un maratón. Um, si hay una palabra de pregunta, viene primero. For example, what are you going to do? ¿Qué vas a hacer? So let's try with this. Uh, let's ask the people in the class. Claudio, what are you going to do after this, this class? I'm going to wash the clothes. You're going to wash the clothes. Very good, yeah. I'm going to wash the clothes. Um, or maybe you could, another way you can say that is, I'm going to do the laundry. I'm going to do the laundry. Es, es lo mismo, lo puedes usar las dos. Wait a minute, I missed the end, laundry. I'm going laundry. to do the laundry. What about you, Alan? What are you going to do after the class? Aquí uso, uh, gonna. What are you going to do after the class? I'm going to read a book. I'm going to read a book in English. Um, no, in Spanish. In Spanish, oh, okay. Uh, tengo otros ejemplos aquí. We're going to learn English. Vamos a aprender en inglés. Um, she's going to sell her car. Va, va a vender su coche. They're going to buy a new, they're going to buy a house. Negatives. I'm not going to do my homework. What are you going to have for lunch? Okay, antes que seguimos con el... Um, una, un, otra nota que tengo aquí. Otro uso de going to. Aquí el uso de going to que hemos visto hasta ahora es hablar de planes en el futuro. Si queremos hablar de planes en el futuro, esta es la estructura que tenemos que usar. Hay otro uso, y aquí tengo una nota. También se puede usar going to para predicciones en el futuro. Pero solo cuando hay algo en la situación actual que indica que va a pasar. Por ejemplo, look at those clouds, it's going to rain. Que es como, mira esas nubes, va a llover. Para usarte para predicciones en el futuro, tenemos que tener algo en la situación actual que nos indica que esa cosa va a pasar. En este ejemplo, los nubes. Ok. Um, vamos a seguir ahora con el presente continua. Porque también hemos visto el presente continua antes. Um, y el presente continua también podemos usar para el futuro. So, el presente continuo hemos visto antes. Es el sujeto, el verbo be y el verbo con ing. So, I am working tomorrow. Aquí tenemos dos opciones. Podemos decir, vamos a ver la diferencia. What's the difference? We're going to, is I'm going to work tomorrow. Y with a uh, presente continua as I'm working tomorrow. Bueno, recuerdas que el presente continua también podemos usar para cosas en este, ocurriendo o pasando en este momento. Pero aquí estamos viendo otro uso usando para el futuro. En este caso aquí, I'm going to work tomorrow, I'm working tomorrow, um, no hay mucha diferencia. Bueno, sí hay una diferencia porque este significa que voy al trabajo mañana y este significa que voy a estar trabajando mañana. Uh, so es un poco diferente. Tal vez es uh, mejor usar otro ejemplo. I'm going to work tomorrow. Um, 
I think abajo aquí tengo un mejor ejemplo para ver la diferencia entre esos dos. La diferencia entre going to y el presente continuo. Se usa el presente continuo para refiere a un plan 100% organizado o compromiso cuando se sabe el cuándo y el dónde. Por ejemplo, I'm going to buy a new car next week. No, so aquí estoy usando la estructura que vimos anteriormente, going to. I'm going to buy. En este caso, no sé qué marco o modelo exactamente o cuándo lo voy a comprar. Es un plan general. Pero en esta frase tengo, I'm buying a new car next week. Ahora estoy usando el presente continuo con am y el verbo con ing. En este caso, es como un plan más fijo. Conozco la marca y el modelo y voy a recoger el coche la próxima semana. A las dos en español traducen como voy a comprar un auto nuevo la próxima semana. Y como las dos estructuras son parecidas, en muchas ocasiones son intercambiables. O sea, no hay tanta diferencia entre esos dos usos. Um, y en la vida real, probablemente las personas no van a fijar si, si tú dices, I'm going to buy a new car o I'm buying a new car. Es casi lo mismo. La, la segunda, I'm buying a new car, es un plan más fijo, pero más o menos lo puedes intercambiarlos. Y por esa razón, cuando el verbo principal es go, um, en el ejemplo del summer camp, que vimos en el principio, puso dos um, verbos aquí, en el, dos frases, perdón, en el presente continua, no con el presente, no con el going to. Y el razón fue, y tengo una nota aquí, cuando el verbo principal es go, se puede omitir el go y usar el presente continua. Por ejemplo, where are you going? Where are you going? No es como esas dos estructuras son muy parecidos. Lo correcto será. I can write there. Where are you going to go? Pero no es necesario a decir este otro go. Es como estamos repitiéndolo. Entonces, cuando el verbo principal es go, lo emitimos y decimos. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to go to the movies, for ejemplo. No es necesario a decir este party. I'm going to go to the movies. Simplemente decimos, I'm going to the movies. Cuando el verbo principal es go, lo omitimos y usamos esta estructura en cambio. Good, so... Um, Claudia and Alan, do you have any questions? No, teacher. No, no teacher is clear. And if anyone in the chat in YouTube has any questions, you can ask me now. Um, so I think uh, that's covered everything. I've got some questions for you. So. Alan and Claudia, Adam's new friend Rachel is going to have dinner at Adam's house this evening. Write Adam's intentions. So I'll do the first one for you. El primero es, el ejemplo es, he's going to buy some new socks. What about number two? It's a negative. It's a negative. Number two is a negative. Can you answer this, Alan or Claudia or anybody in the chat? He's going to not play. 
No, loud eh, music. Más, el not está mal en mal lugar. Tiene que cambiar el lugar del not. He's... He, he's not play. No. He's not going. Very good, yeah. He's not going. He's not going to play. To play loud music. Yeah, good. He's not going to play loud music. Or well, we could also say we got a, the other option is to say he he isn't going to play loud music. We've got two options. Good. Oh yes. Number I'm... three. What about number three, Alan? Can you answer number three? Yes, of course. He isn't going to wear his new teacher. Yeah, good. But this is a this is not a negative, Alan. This is a ah. positive. He uh, he's going to wear his new teacher. He is going to wear his new t-shirt good number four i'm not going to have a shower you or adam two or adam this is the you claudia ah uh, yes yes he's 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 not not he's, it, he's, he's he's not he's, going pero es positivo no negativo ah este es positivo yeah he's is going to have a shower he's going to have a shower yeah he's going to to have a shower going to have a shower so um Luis says, what's the significant, what is the significant of the wear? Where is llevar ropa? Let's see if I can put it down here. Where? Llevar ropa. Uh, so number five. Number five. Claudia or Alan, number five. He is going to phone his friends. Very good, yeah. Got two choices. We can say he's not or he isn't going to phone his friends. So tidy is como ordinar. Vamos a poner este en español. Tidy your room. Tidy a room. Ordena un habitación. He's going to tidy his room. He's going to tidy his room. Very good, yeah. Good. Let's put this in yellow. I don't know what happened with this program. Something happened. Okay, number seven. He's going to wear his own jeans. Very good, yeah. He is a, we could do, again, we got two choices. He's not or he isn't going to wear his old jeans. And number eight. He's going to cook dinner. Very good, yeah. He's going to cook dinner. Good. Richard. Yeah. 
Sí. Uh, the number two, uh, there is a problem. He's not. He's, he's, he's ah, yeah, but no. oh, sí, sí. Yeah. Tienes razón. Gracias. He, he's. Uh, it's, it will be a puesto and not a key as key aggrega. He's not going to play loud music or he isn't going to play loud music. He's not, he's going to wear his new t shirt. Let's practice the pronunciation. He's going to play loud music, Alan. He's going to play loud music. Good. He's going to wear his new T-shirt. He's going to wear his new T-shirt. He's going to have a shower. He's going to have a shower. He isn't going to phone his friends. He isn't going to phone his friends. He's going to tidy his room. He's going to tidy his room. Good. He isn't going to wear his old, old jeans. He isn't going to wear his old jeans. Um, he's going to cook dinner. He's going to cook dinner. Good. Aki, write correct sentences. Miss is como um, extrañar. You are going to miss. Well, to miss, yeah, miss significa extrañar, pero también, like, if you miss perder. someone, it's extrañar. Uh, perder es perder cuando, por ejemplo, llega a el aeropuerto. Perdiste el vuelo. Yeah, but it's the I missed my plane or I missed my flight. Yeah. Right. So here we need to say, your what's the rest of the phrase you're going to miss your plane you're going to miss your plane very good yeah you're going to miss your plane the lion the lion is going to attack us. The lion is going to attack us. Very good. Yeah. We can use a contraction here. We can say the lion's going to attack us. Oh, yeah. The lion is going to. The next one. Hi, Anna. The lion's going to attack us, says diesel. Is that diesel or DS, DSB? I can't read it. So what about the next one? They're going to be late for dinner. Very good, yeah. We can use the contraction here. They're going to be late for dinner. This one? Yeah, the next one. Johnny. Johnny is going to buy the piano. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Johnny's, okay, we can use a contraction. Johnny's going to buy a piano. Next okay. one. He. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Very good. Yeah. And the next one. I'm going to ride my bike. I'm going to ride my bike. Good. Okay, what Could else have we got? Bola? Well, yeah, I mean, eh, si estás hablando in forma, in English, in forma, vamos a decir, you're gonna miss your plane. The lion's gonna attack us. They're gonna be late for dinner. Johnny's gonna buy a piano. He's gonna do it. I'm gonna ride my bike. Este es el inglés informal, usando gonna. 
pues que no es un inglés oficial, ¿no? Pero mucha gente lo usa. Vamos a practicar esa forma. You're gonna miss your plane. Repeat, Claudia. You're gonna miss your plane. You're gonna miss your plane. Yeah. Um, the lion's gonna attack us, Alan. The lion's gonna attack us. Good. They're gonna be late for dinner. They're gonna be late for dinner. Johnny's gonna buy a piano. Johnny's gonna buy the piano. Yeah. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. I'm gonna ride my bike. I'm gonna ride my bike. Yeah, so gonna is just an informal lazy way really it's una manera flojo a decir las cosas um gonna no es en inglés oficial muchos lo usan el razón porque es, es más fácil uh, 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 uh. gonna i'm gonna ride my bike yo lo uso uso todo el tiempo si estoy hablando con amigos o inglés informal pero tal vez no deberías usarlo en situaciones formales Mejor, okay, this is going to, going to, going to. Um, what else? Have we got any more questions? Form the questions. Make the questions. So Julie now is blowing off steam. Why are you blowing off steam? Yeah, you've got a lot of um, idioms. Where are you? Where are you going to go, Mar Marik? Uh, yeah, well, Marik is uh, to say persona. Uh, where is going to go, Marik? Yeah, well, it would be where is Marik going to go? Pero recuerda que cuando el verbo principal is go, lo podemos quitarlo. Podemos decir, where is Marek going to go? Pero estamos repitiendo, entonces es mejor decir, where is Marek going? Y aquí también lo vamos a usar la contracción. Y la manera natural es decir, where's Marek going? ¿Dónde va Marek? Where's Marek going? Repeat, Alan. Where's Marek going? Where is Marek going? Yeah, try and use the contraction here too. Where's, where's Marek going? Where's, where's Marek going? Good. What about the next one? What you do this evening? What are you going to do this evening? Yeah, very good. What are you going to do this evening? Good. What about the next one? When you, when you going? Yeah, something happened. Yeah, I couldn't hear. Yeah, I think you got it right, but your sound is not good. When, can you repeat? Alan, Claudia? Uh, when do you? Something happened with your sound. When Alan. do you go? No, when do no, Claudia? Uh, you got the answer. Where you go and where are? Alan, tienes un problema con el micrófono. No sé si moviste algo, pero es que... Where are you going to do the homework? Luis says, ¿Cómo entro Zoom con ustedes? Tiene, hay que unirse al canal nivel plata. El enlace está abajo. Um, Alan, algo pasó con tu micrófono. I know, I speak to you What about you, Claudia? Have you got the answer to this one? I think somebody in there. Uh, when? When? When are you going to, to do, do your, your homework. homework? When are you going to do your homework? What about this one here? Which? 
Which are you? Which car? Qual coche? Which car? Which car are you going to buy? Are you going to buy? Good. Last one. El último. Um, Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Hello. Good evening, Anna. Who else is in the chat? Wow. Have you got this answer, Claudia? Or anybody in the chat? Wow. Or Alan, if your microphone is working. No, algo paso con tu sonido, Alan. What, okay, el micrófono. Why are you learn? Uh, no. Yeah, why are you learning Learned German? ¿Por qué estás aprendiendo español? Alemán. Alemán. Um, well, eh, aquí lo he puesto en el presente. No, uh, uh, realmente, este he puesto en el presente. Uh, debería decir, why are you, si sí, eso es correcto, pero para este ejercicio, why are you going, going to why are you going to learn German, es German. correcto. Why are you learning German, es porque estás aprendiendo ahora. Ok, creo que tengo solo algunos ejercicios ahora en el presente continuous. Este aquí recuerdes que vimos también que podemos usar presente continuo para hablar del futuro. So, los últimos tenemos que ponerlos en el presente continuo. Is your microphone working, Alan? I think your sound's gone. Claudia, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm taking a guitar exam. Good. I'm taking a guitar exam. I'm taking a guitar exam. What is Helen doing on Thursday? She's starting her tennis classes. Very good. Yeah, she's starting her tennis classes. Good. What are you and Sarah doing on Wednesday? We are going to a concert. We're going to a concert. Yeah, fija que este no es going to, es el presente continua. Porque si fue going to, vamos a decir, we're going to go to a concert. Pero no necesitamos eso. We're going to a concert. What are you doing on Friday? I play, I play in football. Very good, yeah. I'm Playing football. Good. What are Jerry and Ben doing on Saturday? They are going to the cinema with Pat. Yeah, they're going to the cinema, the British English cinema, American English movie theater. Um, they're going to the cinema with Pat. Finally, what is Adam doing on Monday? He's seeing, uh, seeing Sam. He's seeing Sam. Okay, very good. Con eso hemos terminado. Gracias, Claudia. Gracias, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Um, gracias a las personas en el chat. Manuel, Sheila, Dizeb, Luis, Juliana. Y gracias a todos en YouTube que están viendo también después la grabación en YouTube. Y voy a regresar pronto con otra clase. Bye. Bye. See you in next class. Bye.